Hello and welcome to Endless Mode. This is Mysterious Gamer X. And I'm Captain Emoji. And I forgot when we were redoing these stages to do Who Let the Pods Out? Da O Station. And it doesn't count as 100% unless we got it all on tape. Okay, so. Hydra Splatling. Let's go for it. Going for the rapid fire. Well, it's either that or a squiffer. That's fair. Long charge up time, but it shoots forever. Oh, really? I don't think I've actually used this one, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> have a couple of swatling guns and they are fun but <laughs> yeah, they're hard to use to actually get kills but they're good long range harassing weapons yeah uh, like a really good support weapon I guess is, is how I feel about it okay and it certainly covers some ground <laughs> so, I, I guess it doesn't really jive with my uh run and gun approach. <laughs> I'm impressed you're hitting those uh, really dodgy flyers with it though. They, uh... I don't know if they're playing nice or if you're just leading them really good. But... Well, they can only dodge, uh, they can't dodge continuously so if you got a decent rate of fire, you can just kind of track them. Well, you're definitely doing a good job leading. Uh, I know sometimes they tend to be a, a bit of a pain. Okay. Plus, the range helps. The first time I did this one was with uh, Blaster. Oh, yeah. That, they're a pain with Blasters, honestly. Uh, just because you're ready to fire. Uh, if you miss him with the first shot, <laughs> uh, it seems like your rate of fire for most of the blasters uh, is about the same as their ability to dodge. Yeah. Uh, so you can't just track them with it. You do have to. You do have to change up your uh, your rate of fire. <laughs> Ouch! Time to leave. Ah. Oh wow, the uh, the AOE on those little like weird suicidal things is uh, bigger than I thought. Yeah. yeah, I didn't used to think of them as much of a threat in the old game because you could almost always uh, get away from them, but but sometimes not. Well, it feels like their positioning uh, is better in this one. Like, for them, not for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it does seem like the game makes them a bigger obstacle than they were in uh, the Octo Canyon run. I'm sure, like with a lot of things, uh, someone was like, Oh, they're too easy. I mean, uh, they're, they're a, they're a non-issue, a non-threat. <laughs> and so they're like, okay. Because they seldom had any backup either. It seemed like they were usually... Just single harassing guys without any. At most, there'd be like, you know, three or four of them at a time. Or, you know, a handful of them plus a few parachuting in. So if you dealt with the first wave quickly, you just dealt with them in groups of four. But. Yeah, no, they, they definitely. They definitely come into their own when they have some long range support from those, uh. Two tendril. Uh, oh yes, yeah. now those guys are. Uh, on the plus side, it does seem like you've killed off all of the the bomb ones. Yeah. Also, Time to go. something I noticed before is that uh, it does seem like the uh, the two tendrilled ones are smart enough to keep shooting even when they're stuck in your ink. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, they, <laughs> they will they will fight the thing that is in fact ensnaring them in pink. Uh, whereas the single tendril ones are just like uh. <laughs> they can't move and shoot at the same time. Right. <laughs> been rewatching uh, Adventure Time lately. They're all like cinnamon buns. It's like, I need you to do one thing. <laughs> okay. I need, I need you, you to, to do, do two, two things. things. Oh. I yeah. know. I know. <laughs> I swear, if I got rid of everybody else and these guys took me out at the very last thing, <laughs> I lost my shit. Hey, alright. Nice job! Yeah! Gonna get my sweet reward, all these extra power eggs. I mean, these they ones are... give 25. I was gonna say, they are just sort of a gimme, huh? I mean, you know, you beat the area, so here you go. Yeah, who knows how many more uh, tests I'm gonna have to pay for, so right. collect all those when it's safe. Yeah, when it, when it doesn't involve... Uh, Usually it's a trap. Yeah. All right. Oh, you got this. Yeah. Uh, I gotta say, I have never been a, a sneakerhead, like not even a little bit. Because, no. Well, I mean, I usually have to buy one of the three pairs available because you know, big feet and all that. True. Uh, True. It's hard to get really excited about sneakers when you have very few options. Um, yeah, that's fair. But I will say that this game at least helps me understand the idea of being excited about sneaker fashion. Fair enough. Uh, because, of course, they always have your size in Inkopolis. 10 for good buddy radio station. That's right. Okay. So I only have to defeat the enemies. What's the, what's the catch? <laughs> well, I mean, we don't know what the enemies are or what the terrain's like. So, I mean, it could be anything. But yeah, I feel like this game has helped me understand the idea of sneaker uh, fashion mm. as a like as a thing. Oh yeah, get off the counter. I still don't get like limited edition T-shirt stuff. Like, I don't think the the Supreme box tees will ever make sense to me in a in a logical world. But no, I can I can at least get it with some of the cool sneaker designs and stuff. Sure. Uh, I do actually enjoy uh, going to Bisque's shop and like picking out sneakers that are going to look good. And of course, uh, there is some degree of challenge to getting a good pair of sneakers in this game because your accent colors on everything else are going to change depending on what your ink color is. Oh, true. And that changes every match. So, uh, I will say that there are times where, like, I'll pick out a pair of shoes based on whatever my last ink color was, and then okay, within three matches, on. I'm like, oh, I'm no longer coordinated. What have I done? Controller lost connection there for a sec. Oh. That's weird. That's, that's something we haven't really had a problem with since, like, yeah. the Switch came out. When everyone was trying to figure out, Ouch. you know, Ouch. whether or not their left Joy-Con was defective or not. No, we're just gonna let you guys do whatever for a sec, okay? But I do think that's why my preference in uh, Splatoon for sneakers is uh, I like a lot of the multicolored ones. Oh yeah. Uh, Less to go wrong when your color changes. Yeah, I figure it's sort of the uh, it's the shotgun approach, but I like the the zombie high tops and a couple of the other ones where it's like two or three very bright day glow colors. Plus, it seems to fit with a lot of the other fashion. Uh, I know there's a matching jacket for that one, for instance, that uh, that I was very fond of for a bit there. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so it's mobile cover. Do 
until you Hi. get in position to uh, take sure. him out. That's that's really neat. So maybe I'll get my wish uh, <laughs> because uh, you know there's a lot of stages to go and all. But I want a stage where you get to pilot one of those weird little UFOs, UFO-looking things. Um, because, I mean, we've seen a move on set paths, usually for enemies, but I think it'd be cool if there was a stage where you got to be on one, and maybe got to control it, you know, by, like, inking it around or something, I don't know. Octo Commander on the left, or right, one of those Octo on the left. Yeah, Octo Bombers. Well, let's try the bombs. Just deciding which route you want to take on your, uh... Your trip to the top. Yeah. Ouch. Uh, uh, that's starting off about as good as I figured. Oof. You do have a splashdown. I do have a splashdown. I don't know how reckless you want to be with it, but, uh, you could... You could try and run into a gang of them, and then... No! No! <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, doing your splashdown also would refill your, uh, your ink. Yeah. So, you could, you know, ink your way forward with Rectus Abandon, smash, and then, uh have a fully charged tank again. Okay. Uh, it definitely doesn't seem to be a map that lets you hide, just because of all the you know, splash damage. It is kind of a hard one to find any kind of respite. I will say that that must have the most range of any bucket. I mean, it... oh yeah, definitely. Like not as much splash, but uh, definitely the most range of any of the buckets. All right, you guys, calm down. There's a missile one up there at the very top. I just noticed him. <laughs> I'd say it might be worth uh, heading around the back. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> I'd say it might be worth. Uh, going straight on the right now that you've taken out the guy and just taking out the missile dude. You rush him? Mm hmm Rush up there, take out the missile dude, and then, like, you know, splash down the other guy before he gets here or something. Nice! Alright. That may not be able to take the other side from... I think so. Oh, nice. Eat my wrath. <laughs> Other one looks to be a stingray? I'm gonna say if you can just line up that shot, you might be able to... I think yeah. that may be the most successful we've ever been with a Stingray on, like, any stage. <laughs> including, including matches. Yeah. Ooh, bubbles. 
don't know how to use bubbles, but we'll give it a shot. It's better to have a special than not. Uh, the bubble blower is pretty good. Um, I like using it. There's a couple guns I use that uh, that have it. You use more than one gun? I, I change it up every now and again. I mean, they all have very similar characteristics, I guess. I like something with some range uh, and a decent rate of fire. Interesting. I've just been using the uh, Splattershot Junior Deco for the last year. I mean, it, it's a good gun. Nothing wrong with it. But, like, I'll admit it, I used to be one of the people using the uh, the arrow spray. Oh, yeah. It looks cool, and it's a machine gun. So if you charge anybody, you, you've got a good chance of coming out on top in that exchange. Yeah, it's an important number. Um, but no, the, the bubbles are good. Um, you, uh, you blow out several bubbles of ink, and they'll travel around the stage, and anywhere they touch, they'll, they'll ink a bit. They'll start to get smaller as they travel, but you can, uh, fill them back up by hitting them with your weapon. Right, right. Uh, if you overfill them, they'll pop. It usually gives the enemy something to deal with, though, uh, because they're gonna try and hit them with theirs to shrink them down. Hey, old timey clothes. I can, I can dress up as Craig Cuttlefish. I mean, your your Craig Cuddle cosplay is is coming along. Yeah. See, yes, what is. I'm looking forward to though is that uh, Craig's hat is not gonna go uh, over that. No, uh, no, it is not. Mass of hair. It's just gonna sit on top. Yeah, it is. I know. I've already seen a couple of people with uh, the CQ hat. Mm -hmm. And it just daintily sits on top of it. I defeat the boss and all I have is a baller? How's that gonna work? Well, if you have the baller all the time, you should be able to explode or detonate over and over. Oh. Is this the Octo Samurai? Uh, okay. No, all of a sudden people are having trouble with this guy on the internet makes a whole lot more sense. So, your only attack, per se, uh, is the detonate button, I think. I mean, if you bounce into something, you might do some damage with your rank. I, yeah. I wouldn't want to try it on this guy, though. Not really. Uh, on the plus side, though, you do have some mobility with that. Uh, and you don't run out of ink. So I guess that's kind of nice. Ooh. Yep, yeah, that's how that works, okay. All I right. did not consider the fact that you would bounce quite so far if he hits you. Now I now I see the true problem here. It isn't your mobility or damage or anything else, it's it's if he smacks you with that, I mean you're a golf ball. <laughs> Okay. I guess being mindful of where those fences are isn't a bad call. No, oh, knock me over it. Still, not a bad <laughs> plan. It looks like there's four roughly evenly spaced sections of... Oh, and uh, you can climb up a lot of surfaces with the... Uh the ball. I don't know if there's anything here where that's going to matter, but... I was going to say, there's got to be just, like, one spot somewhere on him <laughs> that isn't, uh, <clears throat> absolutely covered. Okay, so that's fun. Two more stages of that. <laughs> Faster and more ferocious attacks incoming. Right. I hate this guy. He's such a cool design, though. Yeah. Like, I realize that doesn't help right now. Right now, he's just a frustrating obstacle. But, uh, he does look cool. They did a very good job, uh, designing him. Yeah, okay, come on. Swing.
So yeah, I do think bumping into him does get some ink on him, but... Oh. Uh, it's not a great source of damage. Not really. I, I definitely say you're you're on uh, you're on the ball with uh, exploding to do damage, but uh, I do think it's how you did the final hit to the tentacle that you have to hit. So I guess you take what damage you can get in this instance. But yeah, no, I can see why this is a okay. Come on, a stressful come on. fight. No, not nah, he tagged me. Okay, he did more than one of those big downward ones. At least I don't have to worry about inking this stage. True. Yeah, before you had to fight him with a roller, right? Yeah. Which, I mean, was, was a mixed bag. I mean, you had to worry about your ink levels and inking the stage, but uh, you did also you have... Couldn't send me flying off it. Couldn't send you, couldn't send you no, flying off no, it. No, no, And, uh... You had a, in the center, coward. And you had a bit more range. I mean, rollers don't have great range, but they do have range. I'm just glad he's on that little, like, unicycle. I mean, if he was any faster, uh, it'd be a really not fun time. But thankfully, he's a bit of a hipster, and he's always, uh, he's always <laughs> practicing his unicycling. Yeah. That's how he commutes to work. Everyone makes fun of him, but he, uh, he's committed to it. Well, see, that's how Samurai fought in the old days. He read it in a book once. <laughs> okay. I do like his, uh, his new color scheme. Oh, yeah. Now he looks good sanitized. It's a neat color scheme. Not everything looks good in it. Like, the octocopters look very, very sad. Like, I worry about them, you know? But, yeah. uh, he actually looks very cool in, uh, in cool tones. Dang! Are there any checkpoints on that fight? Yeah, uh, every stage is a checkpoint. Okay. Theoretically. Yeah, no, it's still spinning, so we're still good there. Okay. That's good. I mean, he's still gonna be a pain to fight, but at least... At least you did get through the first couple of phases. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Just gotta take it nice and patient. Don't take any shots he doesn't give you, I guess. <laughs> Basically. The weebs have low endurance, so you just gotta wait them out. <laughs> no, I mean, especially the ones with the giant prop weapons. I mean, well, yeah. that's just a lot to lug around. Especially since it has a motor in it, like, you know that thing's got to be a ton. Aha! Take that, jerk. You did it! And I'm glad he didn't use his mobility and awesome strength to use actual guns. That would have been a massive pain in the neck. 
I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of waiting for a couple of, like... <sighs> right? You know... They like bringing helpers. entourages with them these days. Right. Like that bread fight. Mm -hmm. How dare that bread fight be so hard. I think you got a hat. <laughs> I did get a hat. No matter thickness, brim, or gauge, a well-done pearl will awe the world. These handsome hats are all the rage. I mean, everyone loves a good beanie. That's true. Well, next time on Endless Mode, we will continue down this pink line here. And then we're getting pretty close. Yeah. Well on our way. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. We'll catch you later.